Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's session on top six most common tax planning mistakes. Right. Okay, before we go to the main content of the presentation, just a small declaration. So first uh, one is um, the information provided here uh, is for general information only. So before you make any decisions, please make sure you contact a professional person um, to help you. And also we're not financial planners or solicitors and uh, uh, we can't provide financial product advice or legal advice. Uh, okay, so if you need a particular advice that's uh, on financial planning side or legal side, make sure you find a professional person, okay, in those uh, related fields. All right, um, uh, at the very beginning, we just want to mention this is a, a common misconception, okay, if you go to a tax agent, everyone should have all the knowledge, it's actually not the case. So in Australia, only a very, very small portion of tax agents uh, provide tax planning advice. Okay, this is very important. Most tax agents in Australia, they only help people to do tax returns. They don't provide tax planning advice. And then also only a small portion of tax planners provide advanced tax planning advice. Okay, and also lower end tax agents tend to make more mistakes. And some of the mistakes we're going to mention in today's session, they are made by tax agents. Okay, so this is very important. Um, and then also because of this, you should not blindly trust just any tax agent. So be very careful. You might want to check around when you receive some advice, okay? All right, so let's start. Um, the first um, common mistake is, um, only focusing on tax savings and ignore after tax impact. Okay, uh, we listed some examples here on typical mistakes. The first one is purchasing tax deductible items when you don't need them. Okay, this one actually I just recently I heard from a friend, actually a taxi driver friend. He mentioned that um, his uh, tax accountant uh, mentioned that uh, uh, just, uh, can you buy a car? Can you buy a new car? because you're going to pay a lot of tax because your rental properties will start earning a uh, profit for you this year. If you don't want to pay tax, buy a new car. But his car was perfect. Yeah, why would you buy something you don't need? His car probably can still last another three or five years. Um, so when he incur a cost, only a portion of it will be tax saving. Yes, yeah, so don't forget, you, your savings only a part of the expense, okay, when you spend on something. So only spend on something on things you need. Okay, the second example we listed here is give up income to reduce tax. Um, one typical example I remember uh, a few years back, one of our clients mentioned that uh, I don't want to, I actually want to give up the rental income. How about I just don't rent it, rent it out? I just give up my rental income so that I don't pay tax. That's also an uh, incorrect way to do it. Yeah, because if you earn a rental income of 30K and then you pay tax only on say 34.5% uh, on it, including Medicare levy, you are still earning an after tax profit. And that's actually really good. Yeah, so tax is okay, but the main thing is you, you, you need to focus on after tax income. If your after tax income is improving, then that should be the only thing you look at. Yeah, so I would put an important note here that tax saving is only a portion of expenses. Okay, so because of this, you should never ever purchase items you don't need or give up any taxable income. Okay, all right, so next one uh, disregarding long term factors. So examples of mistakes here incur maximum deductions before end of year while they could help to reduce more tax in the following year. So no, you probably will notice in the media, okay, when we're close to the end of the tax year before June 30, there'll be a lot of advertisement to encourage you to buy more, okay, incur more expenses. Um, of course, the first thing you need to ask yourself is whether you need them, okay, that's very important, like what we mentioned in point one. Uh, and also you need to consider which year 
he's really helping you to, you to save. Okay, I'll give you one example. What if um someone is planning to sell a big rental property next year after June 30? Okay, so he's going to incur a huge capital gains tax in the following year. And then that could bring him to maybe 47% marginal tax rate. But this year, he might be only paying tax on 34.5%. Okay, then why would he want to bring deductions, more deductions to before June 30 and claim a deduction on this year and only saving 34.5% of it? Okay, this is also very important because um, uh, this year uh, from 1st of July, we're going to have a tax cut. Okay, so that means that we need to be very careful. Okay, that's I'm actually calling on all the other tax agents. If there are any who's listening to this presentation, make sure um double check, okay, um, for your clients, um, what's going to be their marginal tax rate next year. If in case next year their marginal tax rate is going to be um, um higher, then you should try to push deductions to following year if they we're going to planning to sell any capital gains ta um, tax items. If in case our marginal tax rate is going to be lower, which will be more related to the state rate um, tax cuts, then you actually want to uh, bring more deduction forward. Okay, but you have to have that planning um, put in place first. Okay, and um, the second one here, the example we have listed as a possible mistake is shift income such as bonus to following tax year when paying more tax next year. So shift income to following year is a common tax planning strategy close to the end of the tax year as well. Because um, when you're paying the same marginal tax rate, it's actually better to move income to following year. That means you're actually shifting um, the tax payment, not because you're paying the same rate anyway, and then you're actually pushing the tax payment to one year later. Okay, that's a common strategy. But of course, the condition is the marginal tax rate is the same. So of course, similar to the other mistake we mentioned, you have to have a look at your estimated income and marginal tax rate for both years before you decide which income, which deduction um, you want to include in, in which year, this year or the following year. All right, so important note here, before incurring expenses, postponing income close to the end of the year, consider which year will present a bigger tax saving first, okay? Okay, number three, incorrect loan structure for rental properties. Um, so examples of mistakes here. First one, no offset account set up for the loan and um, surplus cash paid directly to loan account. So this one, uh, I, I think uh, a lot of uh, mortgage brokers would mention, okay, when we um, set up your loan, uh, don't worry, we're going to set up a loan that's um, giving you uh, redraw facilities. Okay, if you pay more, you can redraw anytime. But uh, for uh, tax law purposes, once you pay directly back to a loan account, uh, you are going to, it's almost like a pollution. You have polluted that account is not going to be 100% related to your investment, then you can only claim the portion that's related um, to uh, the income driving activities, basically uh, rental property uh, income. Okay, so this is very important because uh, by paying back directly to the loan account, it could be pollute your account forever and then reduce your interest deduction forever against rental income. All right, and then the second mistake we have listed here, uh, split loan account setup, but mixed with private expenses. So uh, split loan is a common tax planning strategy. So when you already have a uh, uh, rental property and you already have enough equity built up on it, when the market price is increasing on that property, you can actually uh, refinance it and get a split loan and use that split loan to pay another rental property. So that's a common strategy because you can maximize your loan borrowings from the bank and also you can maximize interest deduction, okay, for the new rental property you are purchasing against future rental income. 
But we notice that if people don't know how the student loan is set up, if they set it up and they also incur private expenses in this student loan, then again, similar to the first example, that account is permanently polluted, then you can't maximize your deduction anymore. So make sure when you do a refinance, you have a split loan set up. You, you can only use that account to pay for initial stamp duty legal costs for the second property. You can't use that account for private expenses. So this is very important. So before you set up a loan structure, you might want to involve a very experienced tax planner first and talk to a mortgage broker at the same time so that you can make sure that the loan structure is set up uh, properly for tax purposes, okay? All right, number four, uh, incorrect structure for business or investments. Okay, examples and mistakes, allocating more rental profit to high income earners or more tax loss to low income earners, okay? This is quite a common one because um, most of the time we noticed um, when people are purchasing um, a property, when they go to a conveyancer, if the conveyancer doesn't ask any questions or the client doesn't know, automatically uh, it's going to be uh, a joint tenant structure, okay, ownership structure. And then the structure will be 50-50. All right, so, uh, but in reality, um, there is a choice. You can actually distribute um, um, different ownership structure, okay, allocate to different people at a different percentage using a tenancy in common, okay, using a different legal structure. So this is actually very important. So you want to understand first. So the first the steps, first step should be you understand everyone's tax income and then you understand how you should set up the ownership structure first. Then you go look for property and then get it right, um, uh, purchased, okay, and then you have the correct ownership structure. So a lot of people go to just purchase it, already contract signed, settlement done, then they find a tax accountant to do their tax. That's actually a wrong way to do it. You need to understand your ownership structure first before the purchase, actually, before you sign the contract. Okay, second example here, um, uh, you sold trader structure when company or family trust structure could be more suitable. Okay, this this one is quite important as well. Not only for tax purpose, okay, sole trader, some sole traders could pay up to 47% okay, marginal tax rate, but when they set up a structure as company or family trust, the tax rate will be a lot lower. The company structure in Australia at the moment, okay, an actively run uh, business or base rate company uh, is 25%, okay. If it's not base rate, a really large company or maybe uh, earn um, only passive income is 30%. So the tax rate for companies is actually flat, okay? And then family trust, you can potentially even up um, income or capital gain with family members, and then that can help to reduce the tax by quite a lot. So um, if for sole trader structure, and still paying a lot of tax, that's actually not ideal for tax purpose, but more importantly, for asset protection purposes, sole trader is a lot riskier than a company or a family trust with a corporate trustee because it's not a separate entity. So when there are legal issues coming up, the sole trader's personal asset could be exposed. Okay, so this is very important, not only for tax purposes, but also for asset protection. Okay, important note we have added here, before setting up your business or starting to invest, you should consult with an experienced tax planner first. So when, we, when we're talking about tax planner, that means someone who can offer, okay, advanced tax planning strategies, okay, not just an average tax agent. Okay, number five, give up um, eligible deductions when business is running on loss. This one is a quite a common one. Okay, sometimes uh, when uh, a person started a, a new business, uh, generally speaking, the first one or two years or even up to three years, there might not be any profit. Okay, then people can feel, okay, I don't need to pay any tax. So I 
I don't want to put in any effort to maximize my deductions, but that's actually the wrong way to do it, okay? Because when you have a tax loss in a year, that can be carried forward to offset future income, okay? Because of that reason, you should never forego eligible deductions, even if you don't need to pay tax. So here you also need to take a long-term approach so look into the future, get ready for the future. Okay, maximize your deductions as much as possible from the very beginning. Okay. Okay. Uh, last one, but not the least, um, missing eligible deductions. Examples of mistakes, missing eligible deductions, such as expenses without receipts, office meals for business owners, travel allowances, equity exam items, et cetera, et cetera. So we can't exhaust um, all different items here. Uh, we, we did have a different YouTube session called um, Eight Tax Saving Strategies Your Accountant Is Not Sharing With You. Within there, we actually included um, many of uh, the strategies here. So make sure you also watch that session to understand. And uh, important note here, to maximize your tax savings, you need to find the best tax planners on the market will look every perspective to help you to save tax okay all right final tip on how to find a good tax planner okay um uh, now you know that um, it's actually not that easy to find a very good tax planner on the market yeah you know, we sometimes when we receive uh, new clients we notice that, that there are mistakes from before or there are missed deductions so how how do you find a good one we're not the only one I'm sure there are also other very good tax planners on the market and different people have their different uh, expertise in their special areas. And our special area is just um, um, three-dimensional tax planning. Power planning is actually using financial modeling to help you to understand what's going to be the long-term impact of tax planning. And we do um, asset protection, succession planning, estate planning as well. Uh, so that's actually our specialty. But uh, there might be other tax planners who specialize in uh, various different areas. So you do need to find a good tax planner in the area, maybe for your industry or for the uh, special area you, you are looking for. So when you look for a tax agent, I guess, um, uh, or tax a good tax planner, maybe uh, talk to that person. Okay, of course, do your online research. Talk to that person, just ask all this question. Are you experienced in this area? Can you provide advanced tax planning advice? Okay, if they're honest, and most of the tax agents are honest, they will tell you, okay, whether they can do that. And also, uh, potentially, you can pick up a more advanced question to ask them. So say, for example, FBT minor benefit exemption, um, if you know a little bit about it already, yeah, to test their knowledge, to see whether they understand how to and how long it takes take them to answer the question, okay? And then also look at their pricing structure. Tax planning advice is not cheap, and because the reason being using us as an example, over the years, we have invested tens of thousands of dollars and hours and hours of our time to invest in learning and training. And uh, it's not um, easy, also it's, not, it's quite expensive actually as a process, um, for, uh, for us to learn. So that's why um, to be able to provide advanced advice, we have to have, uh, uh, you know, charge the normal charge rate also to cover our costs as well. Another important part of um, the pricing structure is um, you you also need to look at the value you can, you can receive, okay? If uh, you can't see any good value, of course, it's, no matter how much they charge, it's not right for you. For us, say, for example, normally when we provide um, any uh, advice or structural change for their ownership structure or for business structure, we we have to do a cost-benefit analysis. If we can help to, uh, them to save, say, 20K, 30K a year, then they're paying us $7,000, $8,000 a year. They still have a net saving every year on their side. So that's actually what we do yeah, to show them. So talk to a tax planner, ask them and give you some modeling, uh, some calculations to see 
what's going to be the value you can receive, okay? And then from, from there, you can understand their pricing structure. If in case they don't provide any information to you, they just quote you a very, very cheap price, that's a very bad sign. Then right away, they're probably not a very good tax planner. Okay, they need to be informative and very, to be very thorough in any question you ask. So that's important. Yeah, duration and consultations, that's very important. Sometimes our clients ask us, supposed to be a simple question, we actually ask them to book a half an hour session with us because we know there are multiple factors to consider. A lot of questions in Australian tax law, it's not just a yes, no answer. If anyone who give you a yes, no answer, like very simple, most of the time it might not be right. Yeah, even like a question about Australian residency, yeah, can, should I be treated as an Australian tax resident? That could be a long question to answer. Yeah, okay. And then uh, also check on their customer reviews. So uh, all most of the accountants would have a review system either on Google or maybe in their internal system. Google is probably more reliable. Have a look at their reviews, yeah. Do they have any one-star review? What's, got, what's the general score? Have a read the reviews so that you can understand their expertise, whether they are more relevant to the area of expertise, uh, expertise you're looking for. All right, so that's some tips on how to find a good tax planner, all right? And then here is a brief introduction about myself. So I'm a CPA, RTA, and foundation of the PEPA. And uh, I got uh, two master degrees, one from Sydney, one from um, Griffiths, Master of Commerce and Master of Financial Planning. And I'm also a certified zero advisor. And uh, here are our contact details. So uh, if after watching this session, you have any questions, please feel free to check with us. Yeah, all right. And then, so basically uh, this is something we are proud uh, about. So we're the accountants uh, for people who want to grow their wealth. So if you are one of the people who really who are serious to grow your wealth, contact us. Then we'll show you some major tips that's going to be uh, shocking you. Yeah, you're going to be really surprised on something you have never heard before. All right, that's the today's session. Thank you so much for joining us and uh, I'm looking forward um, to our next session with you. Thank you.